Hey guys, I thought I'd make a quick video here because I recently encountered this problem. Um, and this will help people who are dual booting their Hackintosh with their Windows. Um, and this is just a general tutorial for people who want to mount their EFI partitions on Windows anyway. So basically what happened with my computer was I was trying to edit my Clover boot entries on my config.plist. I wanted to hide unnecessary entries like the recovery partition and um, there's a secondary partition that shows up for Windows which doesn't even um, which I don't use to boot Windows anyway so I wanted to get rid of those extra entries and you know I'm, I'm not good at edit editing Clover and stuff in general so I basically messed up and hid my EFI partition and somehow basically what that did was anytime Clover would boot up only my Windows partition would show up as boot options and I you know obviously like I said I'm not good with Clover so I tried to um, I tried to edit the the boot entries that show up using the Clover UE, UEFI shell but it didn't work for me you know and I was getting frustrated anyway so I just wanted a quick fix and I tried the uh, USB installer of Hackintosh to boot from that, to make that boot my hard drive. And for some reason it wouldn't boot anyway. Um, so this basically saved my life because it was getting frustrating and I didn't want to go through the hassle of like trying to plug my hard drive in externally into another computer and then editing it or um, whatnot. Or reinstalling Mac OS X on a separate partition to edit the boot partition of the, my existing install so it just wasn't worth it so this is a quick fix for uh, people who want to edit EFI partitions on their Windows side so what uh, I guess you could also do this using Linux and Linux can more easily read partitions like this anyway but on Windows by default if you go to this PC actually this wouldn't uh, usually be there um, the EFI partition does not show up by default. It was just because I had done it before it shows up. But basically, um, this won't be here, so I'll just show you how to mount it. So basically, what you want to do is you go to your command prompt. You can either go to start and type in CMD, um, or in my case, I have a desktop shortcut. But what you want to do is before you launch it, you right click and click run as administrator. So after you have it loaded up as admin, you type in disk part. Actually, it's one word, part, and wait for that to load. So now after the application is loaded, you need to note which disk your Mac OS is installed on. In a lot of cases, people are dual booting off the same drive, but in my case, I have two different drives, one for Windows and one for Mac. So in this case, I need to figure that out. So what I did was, I type in the start menu disk management and then just load the first option it'll say control and manage disk partitions or something along those lines and basically this will show you your disks and partitions on your computer so in my case I know from my setup is that disk 0 is my Mac OS install disk 1 is my Windows install so basically I'm gonna to wanna to note the number disk zero so next and we go back to the the command prompt here with this part loaded and we type in cell disk zero it'll say disk zero is now selected next thing you want to note is basically the order of the partitions here so in my case the EFI partition is the first one and in most cases it usually will be the first one so that's number one, so that's the number we're going to use one. So we, next, we select the partition. We say cell part one. Now it'll say partition one is selected. Next, we type assign. You can assign a letter to it, but I just let Windows do it. So when you type assign, um, it'll say that it was successfully mounted. But in my case, it's already mounted. That's what uh, so basically what happens is we go back to our my computer here 
and actually he mounted it twice, but you know that's not a big deal. So uh, the next problem that you run into is that Windows does not let you read it. And I've read some people saying that um, you can basically exit Windows Explorer and then relaunch it as an administrator and that will let you get past it but in my case i don't know i couldn't get it to work and i didn't feel like fussing around with it so um here's my solution is to download this uh, free application called explorer plus plus it's a standalone application so you don't have to worry about uh, you know installing it even but uh yeah so it's free on the internet i'll link it to it in the description below so the next thing you want to do is right click it and also run it as administrator click yes to launch it and it's already there but uh, yeah so this is what will, it'll show up on your home screen here so you want to navigate to your this PC and then you click your EFI partition which has now been mounted and then from there you can navigate as normal you go to the boot and then you go to Clover and in here you have your config.plist to edit the config.plist using Windows, you need a XML editor. You can't just use Notepad or WordPad or something like that. So I got a free one off the internet called XML Copy Editor. I'll also link to that anyway. But you can look it up yourself. Um, so then you just open it. And there you go. Your config.plist file is here. And you can make the edits that you need to make your system bootable again, which uh, saved me a lot of hassle. So I was able to delete the edits that I made to config.plist and my system was then bootable. So uh, just a quick video for you guys and I hope this, guys helps, uh, <laughs> this helps you guys. And let me know what you think and thank you. Bye.